All right, in this lecture, we're going to cover Python data structures. Data structures are, is a word terminology used in computer science to refer to different types of containers that store data. And there are quite a few different ones. We're only going to cover the most common ones used in Python. That is list, tuples, and dictionary. There, there are others, and other programming languages have more linked lists, other things like that. But we're just going to cover uh, the three main ones from Python. So a list, I'll uh, just start with some simple syntax. A list, here I'm going to store it in a variable called a list, and it is a always a list always is started with uh, brackets, so square brackets. Uh, and then what, what goes in a list uh, is kind of arbitrary. So a list can contain numbers. It can contain, of course, those are integers. It can, can contain uh, floating point numbers. It can contain uh, strings. It can contain a mixture, a, a heterogeneous uh, amount of data. So in this case, an integer, a floating point number, and a string. And how about a bool, just for to complete the common data types. So lists are useful for storing data and then we can extract data from them. So uh, for example, if I wanted to get the first element of the list, that would be the number one in this case, the integer one. Now. Python uses zero indexing. So here we have zero, one, two, three, four. I'm sorry, just zero, one, two, three. Uh, so the first element would be the zero index would return one. The one index would return 3.4. The two index would return the string a list. And the three index would return false. You can couple of ways you can add things to a list. Um, one way is to simply use the plus operator. So uh, we know <clears throat> a list plus, and then I can um, add something to that list. For example, another string. Um, in this case, I use an extra set of brackets there and another string is itself contained in a list. Let's remove that for the time being. So now we have uh, added that. Of course, this addition operator only um, pins it to the end. There's another way to do that with using the object-oriented approach. That is by using the append function. So uh, if I wanted to append another string to a list. Uh, in this case, it appends it and reassigns it. So if you notice, Perhaps it's useful to go back up here because in this case, we've added this to a list, but a list is unchanged, right? So the original a list, a list uh, still contains with what we defined it up here, and we simply added it. To actually have it re um, added to the list and remain there, we'd have to do a reassignment like this. So the append function is kind of another way to do this kind of operation. So you're going to add something to a list and a list will then con contain the original part plus the additional part that you're adding to it. Um, additionally, you can insert things into the middle of a list. So you can use the syntax insert. Uh, here the, no the notation is the location that you want to insert. So in this case, Let's insert something between 1 and 3.4. Uh, that would be into the 1 index location. And then let's insert the number 10.4. And then look at what a list is. So there you can see it was inserted. You can also do so-called slicing operations. 
So we've already seen how we can get part of a list by uh, say we want the first entry. We know that's the, the one index entry. We know that's 10.4. Um, but if we wanted to get, say, the, the, all the numbers from the list, which in this case are the first three entries. So in that case, it goes from zero to the two index, zero, one, two. In this case, the slicing notation here, this colon means take from zero to two, that part of the list. I'm sorry. Um, so zero, one, two, three. So the slicing notation will return uh, up to the third element, but but not including it. And so there you see the um, the re what's returned there. So let's uh, assign this part of the list to a new list we'll call numbers. And then we can actually call, since we only have numbers now, we can call another function that's defined on list, and that is sort. And then if we look at what numbers is now, um, you can see the numbers have been sorted. So 3.4 has been moved ahead of 10.4. There are n many more um, functions that are defined on the list um, data, data structure. Uh, I'll leave it to the documentation, the Python documentation to discover what the rest of those are. Uh, the last thing I want to show is that you can actually, um, well, there's two more things. The first one is that we can actually reassign things in the list. So if I wanted to replace the number one with say the number 100, the number one is in the zero index location. We've already seen how to take that part. We can actually go ahead and directly reassign it. So in this case, we'll reassign it to 100 and then we'll look at what uh, numbers are so that you can see that that's been replaced now. Um, the last thing is just that we can um, have a, a list of lists. So in this case, I'll uh, define a variable list of lists and use this type of notation. So we have, you know, the first entry in the list is actually a list itself, and that list contains one and three. Okay. And with this, we can use the indexing notation again. Say I want to get the first item in the list of lists, which would be the list itself, one, three, that would be the zero index and that's what's returned. But then I can go ahead and index further into this. So let's say I wanted to get three exactly, uh, then that would be located at the one, the first entry of that. And so you can have this kind of nested uh, taking of, of nested lists. And it, it kind of follows similar to matrix notation. So if you, if you, if you think of the first item in this as, a, as the first row in a list, then that would be the zeroth row. Uh, and then the one would be the um, second column, right? So that would return three as shown here. So those are lists. The next thing we'll talk about are tuples. And you might think of a tuple as kind of a constant list, right? So a tuple is defined not with square brackets, but rather parentheses. And again, it holds data and the data can be heterogeneous as we had before. We can take parts of, so there's what's in the tuple. We can access parts of the tuple in the same way. Um, Another nice thing about tuple is we can do this uh, clever unpacking. So in one line here, what we can do is take the first element of the tuple will be assigned to X. The second element of the tuple will be assigned to Y and the third element will be assigned to Z. This is said to be unpacking a tuple. And so if I do that, then say print X, print Y, print Z, you can see that each of those are now stored that way. The one thing we can't do with a tuple is we can't do that index reassignment. So we saw earlier we can take, say if I want to take the word hello from the list, but I cannot with a tuple reassign it. It's going to give me an error when I execute this. So tuples are, are kind of, um, they're said to be immutable. It means you can't change, once they're defined, you can't change what's inside of them. And so 
it's a good way to protect your data. If you know that you're going to store data and you don't want it to change in any way, then it would be better or wiser to use uh, a tuple. And in some cases, it can be more efficient in accessing that data and other things, that it, the fact that it's stored in a tuple. The last data structure we'll talk about is called a dictionary. And dictionary are, is a data structure that contains things of the type uh, keyword value. And I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. So I have a dictionary we'll call my dictionary. Dictionaries are always use the curly braces to define them. And in here, you'll always have a keyword. The keyword will always be a string. So in this case, I'll, I'll use the keyword uh, first name. And in this case, the value could be any valid type. So it could be a number, um, a floating point number, an integer. It could be even be a list. It could be another dictionary. Uh, it could be any valid Python type. In this case, I'll just use um, the string John. And we'll have another keyword as well. Uh, we'll call last name. So keywords are always strings, but the values are arbitrary. So for example, uh, we could use the keyword age. And the value in this case would be 100. Right? So then to, to extract things from dictionaries, we're going to use the keyword. So in this case, or You can also, there's another way to get things um, from a dictionary, and that is with the git command. So if I say git age, now you might ask, well, why would I use one over the other? Because they both return the value, and this uh, includes an extra syntax. But the nice thing about the git command is that you can actually um, give it a default value. So in the event that the the keyword is not actually defined in the dictionary. So for example, for if I tried to get, you know, say date of birth from the dictionary, uh, in this case, I, I won't get an error. If I were to use the original syntax, I would get an error. You see that because date of birth is not in the dictionary. However, what I can do with the git command is give it a default value. So in the event that date of birth doesn't exist, uh, I can assign it to a default value. And so that would return the default value because date of birth doesn't in fact exist in the dictionary. So that's a useful thing. There's, there's other things that we can define or other functions that are defined on dictionaries. Like for example, if you just want to get the keys, the keywords, you can call the keys function. That will return the three um, keywords from the original dictionary. You can also have, just like we had lists of lists, you can have dictionaries that have uh, as values of some of the entries, additional dictionaries. So for example, I'll use something like this, where if we wanted to then grab, you know, what the value of linear solver is, we would use this kind of syntax. So that's gonna return another dictionary. And so then we can tack on something like that to the end of it to grab the exact part we want. So again, this is a, just a primer for the um, basic data structures in Python. We'll get a lot of practice using these.